Good day, traders. Before we start, if you could take a second and hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you get alerted when we release a new video. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate all the comments and feedback. Let's get started. So today, discussing trading the New York session at the New York market open at 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time and trading for one hour a day. Now, in the last few months, I've been specifically shifting uh, my trading mainly just to the New York session, and we're going to talk about why that is. My goal has always been to scale trades and trade less, but trade bigger on the best trade setups, continuing to hit the best trades and sometimes those are in Asia and in London especially when we've got a three-day setup or we have a first red day or we have a high of the week or a low of the week opportunity when those sessions begin. So my main focus now is the US session and I talk about peeling back layers and, and stripping things back to keep making things as simple as possible. Now in other videos, I've talked about uh, identifying things that are indisputable that you can duplicate every single day. And I get comments from people saying, you know, that's hindsight. Anybody can mark a chart up. And I would encourage you to do that then and, and uh, put your videos out there because what I'm talking about is consistent every single day, meaning the timings. I'm looking for trades at the high and the low. I'm looking for trades at major round numbers, specifically 50s and zeros. Sometimes those trades will be above or below those numbers because I'm entering in with the thesis that the market is going to move from 50 to zero or double zero to double zero, but I'm going to get filled above or, or outside of those levels because there's trap volume at the extremes. But today talking about one hour trading for one hour in the U.S. session gold, S&P, and NASDAQ. Most important takeaway today or tonight is that nobody gets a free lunch understanding that the markets retest these extremes when the equity sessions open. Gold being the exception uh, that it can also move quite well in the first hour, but for the S&P and the NASDAQ, very specifically at the market open at 930 is the only time that I will look at trading those two indexes. These are high probability opportunities that I look for for 50 to 100 pips, sometimes greater. 9.30 a.m. specifically, again for the indexes S&P and NASDAQ. These trades are usually very strong and fast and over within an hour or less and often uh, they can be done in 15 to 30 minutes. As opposed to being in a trade in Asia or London where they can be very good trades but uh, unless again it's uh, an explosive low of the day, high of the day, or low of the week, high of the week, sort of three-day setup, uh, often those trades can move quickly as well. But the U.S. session typically will be explosive and fast and over and done within that hour, meaning that I am I'm take my trade. Uh, these are trades that I can duplicate, you know, three, four times a week, walk away, and, and just keep gradually bumping them up in size. Smart money, the institutions, the banks, they work from the high and the low of the day. And as the day trades, Asia and London set up a high and a low heading into the U.S. session and essentially builds a big box. This can increase our risk reward if we, you know, being in Perth, obviously we have the luxury of all three sessions being in our day. But as the day trades, uh, you'll also notice when we look at these three markets that the the speed and the size of these moves increases once the U.S. session opens. So essentially, again, you're looking at 50 to 100 pips of, of trade minimum targets, and they're over a lot faster. Uh, obviously, the, the liquidity, the volumes increase. Uh, certain markets, the spreads will tighten as well on the indexes rather than trading them during the day. So again, Asia and London will form the high and the low. So understanding that as the day trades, we essentially have a large box being set up. Now, the exception, obviously, is a strong trending day, an all-in day. 
which we saw yesterday in gold, and we'll look at that. But the U.S. session has explosive fast moves that can provide great trading opportunities that once the market opens, and again, the first hour occasionally when there is no news on the schedule, gold can offer a high of the day, low of the day trading opportunity once they have hit the stops. These trades will typically be over in 15 minutes to an hour, and again, usually a minimum of 50 pips, and they can be up to 100 or more on all three of these markets. So just to, as an example, looking at uh, gold this week, London uh, made a high low, they went into consolidation, and this is a 15 minute chart. We're gonna be looking specifically at one minute entry levels. Once we use, I use the 15 minute chart to identify the levels that I'm looking at in terms of the numbers, the extremes, then I'm going to my one minute chart and the timing window to understand. Now I mentioned that gold can trade earlier than that 9.30 US New York Eastern Standard Time open, uh, especially if there is no news on the calendar. If there is news on the calendar, I will not trade that market until after the news has been released. There could be a news catalyst trade, which happened this week again. We'll look at an example of that. Second 15 minutes after the news at 8.30 New York time. But on the indexes specifically, I'll be looking at 9.30 before I do anything. So again, another example on Wednesday on gold, uh, Asia made a high, London made a low, and this went back in the New York Open to hit the stops before reversing and dropping 100 pips. This gave us our first red day after a big news catalyst day on Tuesday, again trapping volume up high, death line at double zeros, and then the, the stop hunt into the open of the U.S. session and the reversal. So coming to the screen, knowing where our levels are, having a thesis that if the market does this, then I'm going to do that. Targeting my major round numbers, looking at how price behaves once it gets to the 50 and double zero levels, not getting in at those levels, watching price, how it behaves once it gets to those levels and stops have been hit. This is a zero sum game and in order for somebody to lose, somebody to make money, somebody has to lose in a leveraged market. So going back to the high or the low at the open of the New York market triggers stop loss orders and it also triggers breakout orders, which traps traders up high or down low. This could be triggering 15 minute breakout traders, it could be triggering one hour breakout traders, it could be triggering four hour, it could be triggering end of day traders, depending on if a previous day's high or low or a weekly high or monthly high or low has been hit in the process. So. A lot of that starts on a daily chart for me. So the time of day and the timings are critical. And again, this allows me to focus on one specific time of day aside from gold, which again, I will, if there is no news on the calendar, we'll watch that first hour to see if it goes to the extreme high or extreme low. A best fill usually can come at major round numbers. Again, the highs or lows may, uh, be near or at those numbers and the stop hunt may exceed or um, go to the major round numbers. So again, it may go through major round numbers, hitting stops, trapping volume above those numbers, but the entry may be better than 50 or zero, but the trade is from 50 to zero or again, 50 to 50, it could be a hundred pip move, whatever that may be, but fifties and zeros are my main focus. So again, once you know what your strike zone is, near those highs or lows and the market moves to those levels depending on whether or not you know, a part of a partial position maybe I may put a limit order in with a stop loss in place in that strike zone to get me into the trade so that fear or you know hesitation impatience doesn't scare me out of taking the trade when the market rapidly goes to that level and hits the stops so again, understanding that when it does go and trigger the high or low, this also triggers other time frame breakout traders into the market. Spreads can fluctuate throughout the day, especially on the indexes, depending on your broker. Obviously, once the U.S. session opens, you have the highest volume, the tightest spreads, uh, the liquidity is in the market. 
uh, and this is for all three of those markets. And depending on your broker, your margins will vary. Uh, you'll have to check out your spreads. Uh, I know with some people, gold, the spreads are quite large. Depending on their broker, mine are usually one and a half to two pips on on uh, gold and the Nasdaq, and S and P is around four once that U.S. session starts. So again, another example of just the Asian. Uh, we're looking at the Nasdaq, the Asian, and the London session forms the high and the low. And again, this is a 15-minute chart. We'll look at the one-minute chart in a moment. But identifying our levels for our highs and our lows. And these creeping trends are a dead giveaway that the market may hit the stops on both sides, but it it will trigger breakouts, allow us to position ourselves up high for a sell or down low for a buy. And again, looking at the difference in terms of the amount of movement in the U.S. session once that equity market opens. So some things to understand about the high and the low of the week is that also each day they will trigger daily levels and trap traders on the wrong sides of these highs and lows and this goes for every market so I get this question a lot will this work on this market does it work on this market every market has the same narrative essentially uh, the smart money works from the outside the retail money works all over the place they trade on the inside they, they trade with indicators they trade into the highs and lows thinking it's a trend and then the market reverses aggressively and explodes in the other direction. But understanding where the lows and highs are of the previous days and week will also give traders an idea when the market approaches these levels, especially in that New York hour of either exiting an area to exit at or an area where when the trade starts there of where that trade entry may take place once they have triggered other time frame traders into the market. So we can look at examples of how the calendar takes a role in in these trades over the course of the week. And in a weekly template, we see payrolls often used. And the setup will start as early as Monday, building up volume and trapping traders on breakouts of daily levels heading into the Friday payrolls uh, for an explosive move, which on the payrolls at the beginning of September, we saw them take out the previous week's high. Uh, as well as the previous month's high before pulling back on the following Monday, which was Labor Day, which would, became our first red day, and then forming a peak formation on the Tuesday for a massive move back down, taking out the entire week after traders were uh, stopped out or, or caught in an explosive payrolls move. So again, an example uh, just in this tightened up chart of where uh, Monday's Peak formation trap traders on the break of Friday's payrolls long. So we have traders caught long at the beginning of the week. Peak formation high on Monday. Traders caught short and probably margined out if they were or stopped out if they were long on the break of Friday's high. Peak formation low on Tuesday. Narrow range day on the Wednesday. Triggering Tuesday's high. So again, Breakout traders caught on Tuesday's low, they hit the stops, trigger breakouts on Wednesday's high, narrow range day. Payrolls coming on Friday, they hit the stops on Thursday and trigger breakout traders on Thursday's low, heading into payrolls, symmetrical flag triangle, heading into payrolls for the explosive move. This whole week was a coil, but they trapped traders on opposite sides of the days, heading into payrolls before exploding in the long direction. So again, understanding that major news on the calendar uh, most oftentimes is at 8.30 New York and this can act as a catalyst or a stop hunt before the market opens. Uh, so there can be a news catalyst trade in that first hour, again, especially on gold. I don't look at the indexes, again, specifically until 9.30, but a trade can set up after major news or give you a bias heading into the 9.30 New York open. So some of the trade setups that I will look for, uh, I've talked about in other videos, the high of the day, the low of the day, or the high of the week, the low of the week, the three-day setup, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, low-hanging fruit, which we'll look at some examples. Basically, that's when we have uh, volume trapped up high or down low with higher level uh, lows for stops 
or lower level highs for stops that are that are right near where major round numbers are heading into the open of the session, which is a giveaway that they're going to go back through that level to clean out all the higher level longs and lower level shorts. The narrow range day or the day zero setup for a trend day, an all in day. The M and W type patterns on again on the one minute, and then the nail and bail trades that. Uh, are just creeping trends. They move 25 to 50 pips off. Uh, New York session will be a 50 pip move. It's not going to move any further. So basically you get in, you get out, you shut it down. So an example of a news catalyst trade where we had a trade in the second 15 minute bar after the news was released. This was core CPI. This wick triggered not only daily lows, but the low of the week. Market went up for 15 minutes before creeping back into the double zeros and giving us an engulfment at the beginning of the second 15 minute candle. The market then proceeded to move up uh, 75 to 100 pips. And again, an example of working the high, working the high, working the high with higher level lows being trapped up high. So again, other time frame traders chasing this explosive move off the news, five minute, 15 minute, getting filled up high. And then the New York session opens and we see the one, two, three to the high to double zeros, triggering breakouts of the high, hitting stops from the previous day's high of shorts potentially, uh, but again triggering end of day time frame traders, four hour, one hour, 15 minute, etc. before reversing. So we get a three bar reversal engulfment, one, two, three engulfment off the double zeros for a 75 pip move back down into traders that were long on that second 15 minute bar. So this is an example of where there were two trade opportunities that were clean, well-defined, off major round numbers, engulfments, uh, and stop hunts. But then also obviously there's a third hour trade, but again, if I'm looking just to be in and out in that hour or that first two hours and shutting it down, then obviously the market has moved, but we've just got two explosive moves that were done and dusted both trades in, in less than uh, 15 minutes. And these are trades that I did take. So some of the questions around live performance about trades and win-loss ratio. Uh, again, I talk about this all the time. Uh, traders' uh, record, their back testing results, their live trading results are really irrelevant um, because you can get 10 traders and being told the exact same setups and they'll all get different results on their trades for various reasons. Fear, hope, greed, FOMO, hesitation, impatience, competence, incompetence, inexperience, mood, uh, their preparation, whatever they bring to this screen on that occasion. And you know, Peter Brandt talks about this. You can make a million dollars in one day and lose two the next. Just from uh, emotional, impulsive, irrational swings. So execution errors will vary from trader to trader and if, if performance will be affected, losses and gains. So preparation, performance, you know, again, I, I love what Mike Bellafori says. You're, uh, you're like a professional athlete. You're, you should have a routine, a game day high performance routine every single day. Coming prepared, learning from each and every trade, getting better every single day and being the consummate professional. And like Peter Brandt, says, you know, his, his whole objective is to be a master craftsman. So some of the ways around in enhancing your results are to use limit orders as well as market orders uh, manually and having stop losses automatically put in place with your limit orders and your manual orders and profit targets, whether they be for parcels or full amounts being taken off to lock in profits so that you're not changing tactics midstream based on emotional swings or you know uh, ex volatility in the market so you think it's going to keep going so you, you adjust your profit target only to see it come back really quickly and stop you out with nothing so it's important to have a plan stick to your plan learn from each and every trade if you got a winner how could you maybe got more out of that winner or traded it bigger if it was a losing trade uh, did you execute properly and take the smallest loss possible? Could you have could you have had a smaller loss on that trade, or could you have gotten to break even quicker, or or did you hold on too long? Whatever that may be, but performance 
is a trading is a, a performance driven skill set and it takes work, it takes practice, an ongoing intentional practice to keep constantly getting better. But again, the objective with my setups now is to be working one hour a day around the highest probability times where the largest amount of liquidity is and the, and the biggest moves are, uh, taking that trade, being done, and taking that gift, and shutting it down and moving and going on to the next day. So again, uh, live performance takes practice to overcome your own issues on any time frame, even friend-to-day traders, even algorithmic traders. A lot of traders will shut off their EAs if they go through a losing patch and they'll miss out on a, on a prime... Uh, trading time because they didn't turn their EA back on when it would have been optimal to run that that system. So again, using limit orders, if I put a limit order in, the maximum stop loss I will have is 25 pips. That's a quarter level above or below. If I manually enter in or it's a best fill price, that could be as low as 12 to 15 pips, depending on the spread in the instrument, uh, which will vary obviously between the S&P, NASDAQ, and gold. So the profit target will either be the opposite high of day, low of the day, 50 to 100 pip boxes. Again, most of these on the indexes are typically 100 pip moves. But again, if it's a counter trend stop on, it may only be a 50 pip box or a narrow range day. Again, the weekly template, how that market sets up. Um, will I allow on the day how to identify and the timing that it takes to get there in terms of how long does it take? Uh, again, most of these trades should be well well on their way to having hit their targets usually after about 30 minutes. So this takes practice, uh, but again, limit orders allows traders to, or allowed allows me to, even just to have a, a partial fill in the market with a stop loss and a profit target, and then being able to monitor that at an area where I have the limit order based on when the market, if it approaches that in live time, can shake traders out or scare them out of actually taking it because of the speed of the move to the higher to the low. Or the reversal, or you know, again, a, a one-minute chart, it's about the level, not about the timing. It's about the level, about stops being hit, getting in at numbers, uh, getting a best fill price, and then having my, my risk managed as tightly as possible. So I will move my stops to break even when a structure has been broken, a high-low structure. So if I'm getting in at the high and there's a higher low or a swing level low or swing level high, once that market breaks through that or the quarter level, again, if it's gone 25 pips or breaks through a structural level, I will be at break even. Usually this will occur quite quickly when it's an explosive move. So some trades you can be at break even in three or four minutes. Uh, typically, I will be out of this market at a maximum of one hour unless I am in a, in a measured move, which last night in gold was a great example. It was an all-in day, and the market moved over 500 pips, I believe, 400 pips, and it was an all-in session, meaning that the market was was had the momentum to keep continue to follow through into the next hour. So again, for me, everything starts on the daily chart where I'm looking for levels of where other weekly high-low levels or monthly high-low levels are for potential uh, stop hunts or breakout entry orders. And again, timing for me is important as each new month offers an opportunity for either a reversal, a stop hunt, or a trend trade. I normally will have my 15-minute charts uh, up with my levels on there as well as my one-minute chart. So I'll take the the 15 minute and mark levels on both and then change the one of them into the 15 minute or sorry the 1 minute chart so I can see my levels constantly on the 15 minute as I'm looking for my entries on the 1 minute chart. And again some recent examples on gold. Uh we first hour established a high and a low major round numbers then we see the market at the US New York Open proceed to take out the high trade into the 50 level in the first 15 minutes of that session, giving us our M formation up top and rolling over and engulfing after it forms a middle structure for a move down, creeping trend into the low and a blow off for a measured move. 
So again, people have asked me, is this FIB levels or anything else? No, this is just 100% expansions of that trading range, which is just one large rectangle. I project that down. I will watch how price behaves. In some cases, I may already have established just a take profit order, but in a strong impulsive move from a rectangle up high, we have a death line, which means that once the market trades through this level, all this volume up top is trapped, and typically I look for at least two times a range expansion as a as a excellent profit target if the market has strong momentum. An example on the NASDAQ of again how Asia and London formed a large order flow over the course of the day with a creeping trend back up to the U.S. session sell from the night before into 50. This is a 15-minute chart. Then the market proceeded to move up into the New York Open, hitting stops on the first 15 minutes and then dropping 100 pips straight down to the low of the day. Obviously, there was a second trade entry, but there was an initial burst, which was over in just over an hour for a 100 pip move back to the low of the day. So the emphasis, again, is on timing and the high and the low and then understanding also on your trading psychology, what I'm constantly thinking is these are evolving each session. I want to see a high and a low in place. I want to know when that middle hour starts prior to the New York session opening at 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. I'm also of the rationale that when they break these highs or lows, that we are also triggering other time frame traders into the market. What type of movement has worked up into that peak formation, breakout, trigger, stop hunt trade? Creeping trend is order flow. I talk about creeping trends will resolve themselves in one of two ways. They will blow off vertically in the direction of the creep, or it will form a squeeze for an explosive reversal trade in the opposite direction. Again, understanding that when 15 minutes has closed, this market now triggers other time frame traders into the same trade. But when we're getting in on the one minute chart, your numbers are at best fill. When we've got price confirming that, we're at break even by the time these other time frame traders are entering in the market. The close of this 15 minute bar locks in all these higher level longs. Our death line again is present. So we have volume that's trapped above a low of the day, which is flat, which is a dead giveaway again that the market is not done doing business. So once we have that level closed through, we know that all that volume is trapped. And again, we potentially have a measured move market about to take off. So an example on gold where the first hour, no news on the calendar, the first hour breaks the high of the day and hits stops from the previous day's U.S. session. So if we were to come along and only trade the open of the New York session, we have a second leg entry that pushed up into the double zeros. We have low hanging fruit. So again, creeping trend, which gives us order flow for a move down. Now, this is an example of, again, a trade that I did take where the market was a creeping trend back into the low of the day for to hit its profit target which again is an example of where the market was 30 minutes roughly back to hitting its profit target. Uh, no explosive move. We're in the second leg of a trade to the low of the day. That's a nail and bail. I'm out of the market. I'm done for the session. Another example of a second leg of a move after stops were hit. Again, gold this week. Uh, sorry, the, this is last week, the 8th. But uh, the market put a peak formation high in after hitting stops. The market then had a creeping trend back off of the 50 level into the quarter level at the New York Open. We gain, we get the creeping trend for order flow, a bear pin hammer, and then an explosive move through the low of the day for a 100 pip trade that's over in 15 minutes. So comparing this to, to trades that happen in the other sessions, these are explosive moves that tend to go vertical. At the New York Open, they don't come back or they or they there's plenty of time to be taking profits and be out of the market 
in an explosive move before the market will recoil and come back the other way. An example on the NASDAQ, we're again right at the session open. We have consolidation in this first hour, a narrow range consolidation. So we have uh, lower highs, higher lows, and then we get a one, two, three right to the high of the day. Triggers the break of the high just enough to hit stops and to trigger other time frame traders into the market. Doesn't allow anybody to get out of the market without any profit very very long to think about that it comes right back the next minute uh, and reverses and goes down 50 pips so again if you are on the break of this long or in this trade long the market immediately pulls back does not allow any breakout traders to be in profit or to take any money off the table before it reverses so there are, again is an example of limit ordering numbers for a best fill price with a stop in place or waiting for the market to reverse and entering in at the break of the zeros for a 50 pip move, which again is over in less than 15 minutes. Now these trades, uh, lots of people, you know, you can say, oh, that's easy in hindsight and everything else. These are trades that you go and practice and do again and again and again. They happen every single day. They're going to continue to happen because they go to the high or to the low in order to, again, hit stops, transfer money from one bank account to the other, and to trigger breakout orders. So knowing that I'm looking for a sell setup, I know my levels, I know where the high and low are. If I'm going to get in manually and wait for the market to reverse and pull back, I know where I'm getting out. Triggers the previous day's low. This trade's over in 13 minutes. Other traders are saying, what just happened? You know, how was that a trade? Why is that a trade? Well, when you do this enough and you know again, I'm looking at the high and the low. I'm looking at major round numbers. So this is an example of where you could limit order. I, I might limit order at 25, a partial position with a 25 pip maximum stop loss, meaning that if it goes up another 25 pips, I'm wrong. But if it reverses now, I can add into that position manually. I want to get filled at or better than double zeros. I've got my stop in place. If I've limit ordered and done a manual order, now I'm going to put my maximum stop loss at the high of the day. I've got my profit target in place. Market moves 50 pips. I might have been looking for 100, but it triggers the previous day's low and goes into a three bar consolidation. Again, 50 pips, 15 minutes, I'm out of the market. We'll look at an example of what happens here, but just understanding that, you know, if you don't prepare or understand what you're looking for, that's when fear, hesitation, lack of preparation, all of these things step into the picture. So you, the, the skill is developed through doing it in lifetime, to develop the confidence, to, to have that unconscious confidence to know exactly what you're looking for. So when people say, oh, that's hindsight, or anybody can say that, well, then do it 10,000 times and then see if you get better at it because the same thing's going to happen tonight because when New York opens, they're going to hit the stops. They might be a trend setup. It might be a reversal setup, but they are going to go to the high and they're going to go and hit stops or to the low. So again, looking at this trade and also understanding that once they've gone to the high, they trigger hourly 15 minute other time frame traders into the market. They go down and take out the low. Again, that hits stops on everybody as well as triggering other time frame traders on the downside. They pull it back into consolidation. The new hour opens they go up and hit the stops at the high, the lower high. Then they proceed to go down and again hit stops on the low. So we have other time frame traders already in the market. <clears throat> now we've got hourly traders triggered in again. Four hour on that third hour trade. Triggering possibly four hour traders, short hourly traders. But you'll notice the market pulls right back up above the previous day's low, which is the blue line right away, which again per prevents any of the longer time frame traders from being able to be in profit. So the rest of that move oops, is above that line, meaning that they're in negative equity. And if we go to the next slide, we can see that later, obviously, the market stayed above that, made a W formation and pulled away. There's a death line on top of that lower high. And the market moves away, all the volumes trapped down low. It proceeds to go back through the open of the session. 
And again, obviously, there's a trade for traders who want to hang around. I want to be in that explosive move, shut the computer down, and walk away. <clears throat> so again, another example of the NASDAQ. Consolidation, one, two, three. We are at the high of the day to major round numbers. So the gain this one, two, three to the high, one, two, three to the low. Go and study your charts. It's about the levels. It's about hitting stops. This two bar reversal. And then again, 100 pip move down. And this is an example of where uh, the market has broken a structural level on the first bar of the, the trade, the pin bar. That's a rectangle to me. They've closed below the quarter level. I would be at break even. An example of when they get to the previous day's low, if I felt this was a strong momentum move, I might exit part of that trade and let some of the rest of that or a smaller portion of the rest of that trade continue to trail that move down further. So again, to emphasize, New York Open, 9.30 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. Major round numbers, 50s and double zeros. High and low of the day, 50 pip profit target minimum, 50 pip boxes. Again, if it's a measured move of a high-low range, they'll be looking at 100 or more pips as a profit target for that trade setup. So an example of a trading range. Uh, market again I, I look at everything as a pump and dump or a dump and pump an example where the market broke through a previous day's low at the open of the session creeping trend down looks like it's gonna blow off it reverses peak formation reversal then we get a bullpen hammer second 15 minute bar for a trade back up to the high of where that dump and pump began so we we've talked about a few of these examples uh, in some of the more recent videos, this creeping trend down gives us fuel. These lower highs are potentially fuel for the move back up and low-hanging fruit for easy stop hunts. So even on a nail and bail, this trade had a 60 pip profit target, tradable profit target range. It was 75 pip box. So there's 50 to 70 pips in there as a profit target even on a nail and bail trade opportunity. The difference obviously being that once New York opens, especially on the S&P, there's some big moves. But much better asymmetrical risk reward when we get into the U.S. market. So again, another example on the S&P and just looking at some volatility. We're at the high of the day. The New York market opens on the red arrow. Again, you can look at these charts on your own. The 13th of September, we get a four bar consolidation with an M, an M formation, but these candles are 25 pips each on a one minute chart. So I know traders, other traders have shorter time frames at 30 second, five second bars. I'm just looking at the one minute and giving an example of where even with a, with a, a manual order of an engulfment, uh, that's, a low down entry fill, I will still only use a maximum of a 25 pip stop loss on that trade. Once this market moves strongly through that low, this should continue very strongly. If it was to pull back, my thesis would be wrong. And in a strong explosive move, it should never come back that far into my trade. So again, once it starts its blow off, this market should continue vertically. And if it comes back 25 pips, into me, then in, I'm, I'm wrong on that trade. So again, an example of where I potentially may have a limit order somewhere above double zeros to get me into the trade so that fear, hesitation does not keep me out. And again, understanding that this, we're going to look at an example from yesterday in a second. This is a great example of where the pump started pre-market. They pump it up. They pump it up. They pump it up high. And all these higher level longs are caught up high now. This is my minimum target death line for the trade down. And also my higher low here is my break even point. But then they give us the pin in the middle of that uh, open of the session. And now that's my break even point. If I'm filled up top, the second entry, if it's manual, again, a maximum stop loss because it should not come back above this pin level at all if it's an explosive fast move and understanding the rationale that the reason it's fast and explosive is because now they have all these longs caught up high above this death line and the faster they get below there the faster these people are in negative equity 
So looking at last night's S&P on the 16th of September, again, pre-market in that first hour, we see the pump, the pump start coming in. We hit the gap time lower high. They pull it back and the market opens on this bear pin doji. So again, there's our, our, our bear pin middle structure for our break even point. So again, they pump it up, they pump it up, they pump it up and then one, two, three, they hit the high of the day to 50, reversal engulfment and a pullback into round numbers to give us our shortened M formation. So again, if traders were to limit order up high, thesis being that they're going to hit the stops in reverse, placing a maximum stop loss order one quarter level above. If traders don't like that idea because they feel like they're getting in front of a, a steam train, <clears throat> then we wait for the reversal or closure below the bull candle and the retest into double zeros. The market falls through the first pin of the open of the session. That's our break even point. We have a death line now basically above double zeros. So death line meaning that everybody above this double zero level is caught. And if we understand that rationale, once they go through there, the market continues to fall. And just looking at our timing wise, this market's fallen 200 pips in the first hour of that market session open. So again, just understanding that timing is everything. The market continues to move. No evidence of a low. This may be an example of we're taking partial position off and leaving a trailer to perhaps scoop a bit more cream off of this trade. I'm looking at last night's example on the NASDAQ. Again, we see the first bar of the session, the big pin, doji pin, and then the market proceeds to go. We have a narrow range consolidation that formed around 50. And then we see a one, two, three hitting the high of the day. Then a bear pin hammer after the high of the day drops below 50 and pulls back again. There's a sell high opportunity on the bull candle if you didn't limit order or sell the bear pin hammer. And again, our break even point is either the close below the death line, but once the market breaks through the pin, this is your, your worst case scenario as a break even point. But usually, once the market closes below the death line, again, all this volume trapped, and we could scrunch this up sideways and look at there's more volume trapped up top but once the market goes up one two three hits the stops and again an example of where the market uh, we're at 50 that's a creeping trend all the way down this would be an example of where we get to the 50 pip level uh, we've been in this trade towards the end of the hour we take our 50 pips or 75 whatever that is uh, depending on where you decide to exit but as we get closer to the end of the hour I'd be looking to take that that uh, 50 to 75 pip profit target off the market being done and coming back the next day. So not for everybody perhaps, but what I like about this is specifically I'm working at the high and the low, major round numbers at a very specific time of day. We can reproduce those three each and every day, each and every New York session. And then I'm looking for engulfments and pin hammers at the high or the low once stops have been hit. So yesterday on gold uh, was a great example of a first red day setup. And if we just take a look at the daily chart real quick, again, we had the high of last month just tapped out on payrolls. We had a first red day on Labor Day Monday, which again was a holiday in the U.S., First red day on the Monday, big move on the Tuesday. We had a, a first red day yesterday after the news on Tuesday. We had an, in, it was also an inside bar narrow range day at major double zero levels. And we had the low yesterday of that news candle day Tuesday for the low of the week. The market was already trading down heading into the uh, London session. But we also had low hanging fruit from the previous month. Those lower level, uh, sorry, those higher level longs and stops from the previous weekly lows were, were sitting up high. And we also had a bullpen hammer daily trade long from the beginning of uh, the second week of the month, which we can see the market fell down strongly all the way through. 
And we'll just look at this on the one minute chart. We'll look at this in the 15 minute. But we had our first red day. The market broke out in the Asian session heading into London. The market continued to trade lower heading into the New York session. So one of the questions uh, that traders obviously would have is how do you trade this heading into the open of the session? So no news on there was news on the calendar last night at 8.30 New York time. The market was obviously in a strong downward move. So the market as we head into the second hour has already engulfed and started to go sideways at double zeros. We're in an all-in trending day. The only way we can trade is short. The market goes sideways at double zeros and gives us our engulfment at five minutes prior to the New York session window. So we had a news announcement first hour, 8.30 New York Eastern Standard Time right here. And we'll just put a box around that candle. Uh, retail sales. So an example of po a potentially second leg trade on a news catalyst continuation. This is the first bar of the New York session for a double zero, double zero trade continuation measured move. We have a one bar stop. Uh, this is a 100 pip profit target and this is just purely a measured move trade on a second uh, second uh, second leg trade after a news catalyst at the New York Open. So again, if we came to this screen only for the New York session, a great example as a market already in trend and we get a second entry at major round numbers, engulfment, measured move for 100 pip trade. That trade was, was over in 40, um, actually 20, this was 25 after, it hits the double zero level in 20 minutes. So you're in, you're out. Uh, you may have held on a little bit further thinking it was going to go back, but if the market came back and started to trade sideways, obviously you'd exit your partial or if you hadn't taken the whole thing off. On a move like this, I'd just be out of the market. The market had already fallen, I think, 400 and something pips. So I wouldn't have an illusion as we get to the end of that hour that this market could now potentially start to put a bottom in place. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Again, my main focus is, is that New York hour, the explosive moves, Gold, S&P, and NASDAQ. Again, uh, even in, at what I would suggest for traders if they're interested is purely doing this on a demo account and studying these markets and looking at the opportunities. Again, I'm not interested in trying to scalp pips in and out of the market all day. I want to come to the screen, be on the screen for one hour. Uh, you know, there's going to be trades in Asia. Yes, there's going to be trades in London. Yes, but there's also explosive fast moves that I can trade in New York be done and dusted. There are trade setups that will happen again and again and again that are scalable in size. There's very little stress when the markets move and explode in that manner. They're over and done with quickly and you can get on with other things in your day. So hopefully you got value from, from today's video traders. Again, thank you for a ton of great questions and feedback. Uh, have a great trading session. Have a great weekend and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.